And yep. And um, so this will go posted on the Rack YouTube channel and um, our some of our social media platforms after the fact. With um, I'll fix up the captions a little bit at that point so that they're all accurate and good. Um, and I think we just also want to acknowledge here at Rack that we are really working on our accessibility um, offerings and we are imperfect at this point. And I apologize um, for that. And I wanna note that it's something that we're working towards. And if you have feedback or comments about something that you wish would have been offered tonight, as far as accessibility goes, please let me know. Um, and we will do our best to provide that post the conversation and send you a recording or whatever you need. Um, I think I'm gonna say, we are small enough that if you want your video on, it's totally fine. It's okay to keep it off. Please do keep yourself muted during the conversation just for you know everyone else's sake. Um, we have two panelists with us. Panelists, is it a panel if it's two? Two artists tonight with us in conversation. I'm guessing we actually have a lot of artists with us tonight, but two that we're gonna be hearing from. Um, and you are welcome to ask questions of them at the end of this. We're gonna save about 15 minutes for questions. Feel free to just like keep your question in your head or jot it down and save it to the end. Or if you'd rather put it in the chat, you're welcome to do that. And I will keep track of those and, and make sure that they get asked at the end too. Um, I think that's all I have. Let me know if you have any questions, you can message me directly in the chat. Um, again, my name is Anna. I'm going to be putting some links in here, but I think let's just get started. I will introduce my colleague Salvador and actually just hand it off to you to introduce yourself. Awesome. Thanks, Anna, so much for the greeting and also all your help organizing this with me. Um, hello and welcome, everyone. Uh, this is a really nice size, actually. I'm really happy to see it does feel really intimate um, along with this gray weather we're having at least here in Portland. Um, so appreciate all of you joining us to hear from the two fantastic artists um, that are taking part in today's conversation, uh, which is part of the programming offered by RAC's Public Art Murals program. Um, my name is Salvador Mayoral. I'm part of RAC's Public Art team. My role is mainly managing public art projects and overseeing the aforementioned murals program. <clears throat> and I will also be moderator tonight. Um, so before we meet the artists though, I just wanna share a little bit about how um, this series, which is called Here and There, um, came to be. Uh, over the last five to six years, uh, we here at the Regional Arts and Cultural Council have heard directly from muralists expressing their desire to learn from each other in more intentional ways. Um, Two things that stand out about that desire is a wish for peer-to-peer -peer education and also um, creating and building relationships with other creatives. So in an effort to address and serve these needs, over the last year, we've been engaging and brainstorming with various community members, artists, and other RAC staff. Um, I particularly wanna shout out um, our murals committee um, who've been an integral part of this. And um, for those folks, one of them is joining us today, Jason Powers. Hi, Jason. Um, so uh, one of the ideas that has risen to the surface in these brainstorming sessions has been creating space for muralists to have a dialogue about their practice, including how and why they do what they do as artists. Um, so on top of that, we thought it would be doubly interesting to have the dialogue take place between a local muralist and another muralist in a different part of the country. Um, technology has increasingly become part of our lives uh, as a way to connect with each other, especially in the last year and a half. And we think there's something really special about having artists connect and converse when they have an opportunity, when they might not have an opportunity otherwise. Um, so tonight's conversation is the first of three conversations that we'll be, we'll be hosting between now and October. Uh, next month's conversation on September 23rd is between local artist Alex Chu and Katie Yamasaki from Brooklyn, New York. And then the third conversation is happening on October 21st between uh, local artist Darren Todd and Jake Fragwa, who was based in Tucson, Arizona. Um, 
We understand knowledge sharing is important, and we hope this series will be interesting and insightful for other muralists and to the overall public that acknowledges, appreciates, and engages with murals and art you experience throughout your day outside. Um, so yeah, with that being said, let's get into this. Um, so to get the conversation, um, I would love Cece and Kyra, can you both tell us a little bit about who you are and the work that you do? Absolutely, Cece, would you like to go first or? Um, sure. So hello everyone, um, it's good to see, I mean, familiar faces and new faces and definitely honored to be invited to this conversation and have this conversation with Kyra and the rest of the folks uh -huh. over at RAC. So <clears throat> it's um, been long anticipated and I'm excited to be kicking it off with you all today. I'm from Oakland um, by ways of Oakland Bay Area, by ways of um, the Philippines. I came to the United States when I was 12 and um, I'd been kind of in practice of, of, of drawing and painting since I could remember. But um, as of now, I've painted pretty much um, in different places throughout the world, um, from Europe to Asia to Latin America, and obviously here in the Bay Area is kind of where my headquarters is, but um, I guess we're gonna go a little bit deeper as we go through the conversation about what it is that we're painting and how we go about doing our work. But yeah, I'm an illustrator, I'm a painter, I'm a muralist is kind of what I'm known by has kind of been my trait been doing this for over, <clears throat> over 15 years now. Um, and also do some arts education, as well as arts administration and the different hats and the different roles I play. So having some versatility and knowing kind of just the different spaces um, in which we conduct and how we conduct this work. So I'm excited to learn from you all tonight and also share some of my experiences and, and having been doing this work for, for quite some time now. Hello, my name is Kyra. Uh, I don't want y'all to kick me out the group. I'm originally from Cincinnati, Ohio, but I started my solo, my solo public art um, career here in Portland. And I've been uh, actually muraling for, oh, how old will I be? I ooh, for 12 years. I started when I was 15. Um, and, but for, for the most part at 15 doing murals, it was kind of like a summer camp thing a summer camp where we fortunately got paid. They thought it was, you know, it was, uh, you know, in our best interest for us to learn about finances at such a young age. So I was very fortunate to um, really have an early start in um, muraling. And so I pretty much got my foundation on how to mural um, and, and, and the behind the scenes of what it takes to make a mural happen uh, through a program called Art, Artworks. Um, but now, uh, as an independent artist uh, doing work for myself, being here in Portland, I'm really learning about the business side of things. So hopefully that's something we can get into because I know that's a lot of what people may want to hear about. And yeah, I've been here in Portland for two and a half years and been doing public art full time, public art and um, personal, um, personal commissions for about a year now since being here. And uh, I'm excited to share all that in this conversation with you guys. Yeah, I'll pass it off to Salvador. Thank you both for those introductions and also just grounding us in like who you are and getting this conversation started. Um, so I'm just gonna open with like a, just a general conversation, especially um, hearing your journeys. Like, why did you both get into mural making? I'd love to little, know a little more about that in particular. Yeah. Oh, I'll go. Okay. <laughs> and then I'll pass it off to you. Well, for me, it started with um, like, I think every 
child's first language is learning how to make gestures and learning once they pick up some sort of mark making utensil is drawing like every child is dr drawn to creating an um, having an imagination and creating that in some sort of way into their universe you know i look at my nephew now i'm helping raising my nephew he's seven years old and just from time of his birth to now to seeing how curious he is of the world and how his imagination just just runs runs rampant and uh that all that that's in all of us so i think innately i've been an artist since birth but what made me realize that i really want to pursue this is it, funny it started with my very first self-portrait uh there's a picture that my grandmother had of me that was taken in kindergarten and i replicated it and i look back at that picture every year around my birthday which is coming up september 12th so if y'all want to shoot me <laughs> Um, and I look at this portrait that I did of myself and right now I think it was ugly, but at the time I drew it, I was like, I'm the greatest thing walking. I'm so talented. You know, I really believed in myself and, and having that portrait created. And I just, I ran with it. You know, I, I knew that I, I, if I stick to something, if I was consistent with something, whatever it was, I'm a very determined person. I'll take it far. So around middle school, having made that, I was, how old was I? I was 14. So around high school, junior high, I made this portrait and I'm like, okay, art is what it's going to be. I got to high school and there were these flyers that said, make art, get paid. And I'm like, I like art. I want to get paid. Let me see what these flyers are about. There was a program, a nonprofit in my, or, um, my city that employed youth to paint murals. And that's how I got my foot in. Just starting from one, having that innate uh, love for art that I think we all have. And then deciding to be consistent with it. Um, and then there was an opportunity. So it started with like having a drive, then having an opportunity, and then, you know, making the most of the opportunity. And then I moved to Portland, which is a whole nother story. And that's kind of how I got into to muraling. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a true believer that, you know, with something that Kyrie just kind of mentioned, that if if you can walk, you could dance. And if you could, um, you know, if you could talk, you could sing. And if you could write, you can draw. And similarly, I mean, I think that was definitely such a big part of my own cultural lineage. Um, as I mentioned, I grew up in the Philippines and kind of like a farmer village town um, and grew up with my great grandmother who was illiterate. Um, she didn't read or write and so a big part of our communication as I was growing up was through drawing images and things that she might not be aware of because it's things that I've learned in school and wanting to be able to communicate that. Um, she was my road dog. So we, we, we was tight and, and wanting to be able to share with her all the different things when I wasn't with her and drawing became such a big part of how we communicated with each other. And as an adult, I find that still to be true and ways that visual art still becomes my means of communication to the world. But beyond that, it's also been my means to engage with it. Um, having came here growing up, um, since I came out here when I was about 12 in San Francisco and, you know, as English being a second language, um, I found visual art or drawing and things as kind of a big part of how I engage um, socially with the folks in school and, um, you know, folks and friends. And it was something that I found comfort in um, when words just wasn't enough. And when I couldn't find the words to explain some of my thoughts and some of my feelings and and again, I mean, I think there's a still big part of that that's still very true today, though, you know, I've kind of improved my handle and my navigation with English and, and whatnot. But it's, I think, you know, when they say pictures can say a thousand words, it, I found that to be very true in my own life experience and still very true to having taught, you know, students from elementary school up to college and even up until, you know, and, and various communities ranging from the age of seven to the age of 70. I mean, I've had students who were like way older than me with a lot more life experience, but wanting to really learn this, um, 
this craft, which I think is also what made me fall in love with it, is knowing that it is a craft that we can carry for a really long time. And I know that it's been the one craft that has been consistent in my life. So I've always drawn and um, I've learned to draw with colors um, on the streets, you know, um, out in public spaces where when you don't have studios or when that's kind of a, such a big part of my learning um, growing up in, in the city, coming from like a village to a city, the streets became kind of like our walls of schools. And um, just remember looking up in, in walls throughout San Francisco where I started recognizing images and folks and people that kind of look like me that shared similar or if not, you know, some sort of similarities within, within stories and just being really awed by that and knowing that that's what I wanted to do. And, and now like a lot of those, like I could probably take you all on a tour throughout the Bay and point out like, you know, a good chunk of those artists and knowing those artists having collaborated or just knowing them just having been doing this on the field for a long time. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of, um, in some ways, it's also a place in which I found community. It's a place in which I found where I belong. And it's always a consistent reminder of, of home in the different places in which I've been. So it's definitely something that, you know, is amazing and it's a way to express myself, but in, in so many ways, it's also been the thing that I've actually embraced me. So it's, it's been a blessing being able to find a craft that I feel like not only, you know, folks have always said like, oh, thank you for your work because you're allowed to tell stories that sometimes it's just not really told. Like a lot of stories, by women of color, you know, um, um, working class, women of color, we, we just don't get to see our perspective all the time in like big media and, and, and I feel like public spaces, common spaces has become a space for me to kind of really feel empowered to tell our stories. And it's been, um, it's been an amazing, you know, some people call it a gift, but for me, I think it's such an amazing release and, and blessing. Um, it feeds me as much as I hope that some of our work feeds the many communities that we've worked with as well, so. I really appreciate you saying that, Cece, and actually that segues into the question I have for both of you. Um, and for folks, we've, in, we've included both Cece and Kyra's uh, Instagram, so folks, are not aware or curious, please feel free to browse, but can you both just share with us like, what exactly do you paint? And Cece, you've already touched on a little bit about that, but like also like how and why, why do you choose what you choose to put, especially in such a public large scale arena? I'd be curious, yeah. Oh, my answer is pretty simple. I, I paint people. <laughs> I paint their faces. Uh, I think what uh, motivated me uh, to that niche was really my grandmother. Oh, this is going to be the battle of grandmothers. They're both passed away. So I like to think that they're like kind of arguing because I had a grandmother that raised me, but I had a grandmother that inspired my art and I don't want anyone to get jealous. So shout out to all the grandmas out there. <laughs> um, so I had a grandmother who uh, used to draw fairly well um, and looking at her work, say around seven or eight, you know, the goal was always draw better. I think I was always driven by some sort of co competition. And so that's kind of how it started, even with my siblings, you know, being, I was, I'm the youngest of all of my siblings. So when it comes to coloring and just having dexterity, they were always, you know, just a step ahead, but um, I, I wanted to hone in on the craft. And I was always just enamored with people's ability to draw people. And I was always enamored by people. So I just, it was a niche that I naturally fell into. And as I get older, I try and find a more poetic way to say that I draw people 
you know, I draw their essence, draws, you know, I draw people because I just like drawing faces. I thought it was, you know, but uh, the more I do it, the more I find meaning in my work, the more I make more complex work, um, the more I learn about the people who I'm replicating, who I'm memorializing, that's, that, that, that's what does it for me, hearing the stories that people have. And a lot of times people come to me to draw their family members or their loved ones. And um, these people are being canon by another person for the work they've done in someone's life. They're, everyone is important to someone. And sometimes I, I like that story, that connection that we all have as people capturing that humanity. So yeah, that's that's what I, my niche, my niche is people. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think similarly, I paint people too. <laughs> and that's been this, some of the, my biggest muse. Um, but specifically, I think, I like to paint um, people. Um, what I've been painting um, for a long time, been consistent. I mean, my 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 subjects change, but it's been specifically, you know, people that holds um, specifically. Um, people that are consistently fighting for a more dignified existence. Um, I like to paint people empowered in their power. Um, and, and I consider myself both kind of like a visual translator and a visual storyteller. And beyond the, I mean, a face tell stories um, and their stories essentially is what capture the hearts of the folks and people and what I'm hoping um, and, and painting them bigger than life is to, to capture the attention that we are indeed worth of that attention. Um, because in so many spaces, we're not even given that. So I paint a lot of women, a lot of um, people of color and a lot of folks, everyday people really who are seeking for a more dignified existence. And I feel like our stories are magic. And, you know, just really seeing the beauty in the mundane is what I like to capture. Because sometimes when we're in our everyday rituals, we don't always see the sparkles and the brightness. And I think our resilience um, is, is, is magical. Our existence, just being here, is, is, is magical and a story to tell. So. Um, I intend, my intent is to capture that through the work that I, that I do um, and to be able to use those as a platform to continue conversations like that we're having now, um, to continue growth and learning in order for us to find out more, like who are these people and what are their stories and you know, what are their fight and what are their struggles and what are their victories? Um, and hope that that could essentially um, spark conversation, but also spark change and, you know, really shift our culture um, and be cultural catalysts of, of, of envisioning the world that we want to live in and the world that we want to see. So I like to think that the paint the, the, the paintings and the murals that I create inspire kind of a vision of the world that we're creating um, right here and right now, but also what we're working towards, you know? Absolutely. I, I have this question later on, but I feel like I guess this is a perfect moment to just segue into it and just ask of both of you. You know, this last year and a half in particular, right, it's been such a challenging, unusual, uh, meaningful time, right? And for lots of different reasons and for all of us. Um, and so I'm just curious because what has also really happened, um, I'm sure in lots of different places, but particularly here in Portland is this, this explosion of like artwork in the streets, particularly of murals. Um, and so um, for both of you, like, I'm just curious, what is most exciting or challenging or both for you about the role of public art in this moment? And as well as the role as artists both play in your communities? 
Cici, okay. well, would you like to take this first or? Does that matter really? Um, sure, sure. I, I, I can go ahead. Oh, okay, so um, for me, um, it's really a call to step up. I think um, we're in a very pri privileged pr uh, position. As artists, we are the historians. You know, we capture the moment. We canonize what's happening in time. A lot of times when we look back on history, aside from the text, there's also the visuals and we're in charge of setting that. So there is a bit of um, responsibility we have to be very honest in what's going on. Um, and also, you know, no one can do everything, but everyone can do something. And wherever your gifts lie, um, in a time where there's, um, there's uprising, in a time where there's uh, friction, whatever your gift is, you have to, 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 to lend it to the cause. Um, and that's just a, an integral part of just being human. Um, you have to somehow lead, uh, give your time, your resources to moving, moving forward um, for the better. Um, and it's easy to say in hindsight, but history always tells what side you're on. So a lot of times we'll talk about what we do if we lived at this point in time or at that point in time, but we're living now. So it's very important as, as disorienting as this time has been, as trying as this time has been, you know, this is where, you know, the diamond in a rough comes out, uh, resilience comes out. And there's, this is where the beauty, the beauty of struggle has its time to shine. And for me, it's very important that um, I don't take for granted uh, the gifts that I have and how I should use them to service to service this this point in time. So it's been it's it's there's a lot uh, that happened in 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 this time that's kind of disheartening, but there's a lot of beauty in it and community coming together, standing uh, standing against uh, oppression. We're not tolerating you know uh, mistreatment of any disenfranchised groups. There's a lot of community in that. Um, it's been some hardships, but the hardships has brought us together. And I'm just, I'm thankful for my part and, and playing my part as, as the artist and make sure that I truly canonize what's going on as the host, historian, because I think that's pretty much what we do as artists. Um, we, we set it in stone. Yeah. I love that. And I couldn't agree more. I mean, definitely, I think part of our work is kind of being markers of time. And that was very, um, very visible and we've seen that happen throughout the nation. I mean, in this time last year even when the racial reckoning of this country was happening, just the amount of work that was being put out on the streets, um, out on the businesses, on the plywoods that was happening out on the actual crosswalks where people walk through and drive through. Um, people were just painting and and all this and reclaiming public spaces as a means to share their voice, share their thoughts, um, share their agony and share their griefs, um, but also just share common space, um, especially at a time when social distance have definitely, I think, shifted the way we engage, not only on public spaces, but how we engage with each other. And I think, you know, for some of the work or many of the work that I've created, um, not only was it a, a, a visual imagery of, of, of representing what was happening at the time, but he also served as a place where people gathered and where people made altars um, and, and, and the portraits and, and faces of people that we've lost, um, um, but also and portraits of people that are still out here doing the work and fighting um, and offering what they could offer. Like it became a place where people gathered and, and, and made offerings and a place where people had conversation and strategized as far as like what we're supposed to do next and where we're trying to go. Um, but it allowed people to come together in different moments in time, you know, because as, 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 Kyra was saying um, in terms of as people was protesting, people like taking over the streets, what happened after? 
when that's gone is, is what are the images left behind, you know? And we were able to be blessed enough to be able to contribute to that and to have our thoughts um, be, be given visually out on those spaces. Like I just remember over here in Oakland specifically, I mean, the whole downtown became kind of a, like a huge exhibition gallery that went on for blocks and blocks and blocks because all the businesses were closed down, plywoods everywhere. I mean, at one point you were walking and there was, I felt like I was imagining Haystack just rolling because, you know, we were still trying to figure out how to navigate sheltering in place and being on lockdown. And with everything else that was happening, um, with 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 um, Black Lives Matter and, and, and the stuff that went down last year, I mean, people just needed needed to to feel like they can contribute and 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 be part of something, and 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 we made that happen. Um, we added colors to what would be a really kind of gloomy town, and what became a gloomy town because a lot of things were closed and things were not, you know open in the way that we were used to and people were outside whether or not they were protesting or not but we, we were able to have a reason to be outside and to actually see messages and visual images of unity and, and solidarity. And I think that was something that was really beautiful and, and, and really historic at this moment. Um, like people still talk about it, you know, there's still some remnants of those work that are left behind um, there's students that I know at UC Berkeley who created like whole website platforms of like ensuring that we have some sort of documentation because a lot of those flywood this businesses reopen again had been taken down, but that we have marked it and it happened and that and that we took a stand and that we weren't just kind of you know watching as the world turns, but rather actively participating and engaging within it. Um, so I think that was a beautiful reciprocal kind of um, thing that had happened. Not only are we putting out to the world what we believe is needed in order for us to create the world that we want to live in, but we were also having an actual space to be able to release kind of just the angst and all the other emotions that probably have given the situation and given the time in which we're in. So. <clears throat> And whether or not that's a role that everyone needs to take on, I don't think is, is something that, you know, we could say this is a mandatory rule that artists take. I mean, one thing about being an artist is almost like we have a license to be able to create what we choose is relevant and important. And that might vary depending on where you're from. But I think inevitably during our time and where, where we're at, um, I find that such a relevant part of, of what, what Kyra had mentioned of like having this gift or the skills or um, for me at least is the actual connections and how we can communicate with it within the communities that we're part of or the communities that we wanna be able to talk to or the world that we wanna engage in and the world that we wanna change. So I think that's, um, I think that's very important and relevant. And as Kyra said, it comes with a lot of responsibility. And, and I know for a fact, not all artists wanna take that on, but when we do choose to take that on, um, there's also such an amazing amount of, of, of kind of what I said earlier of how it feeds back, you know? It's like knowing how we can engage and knowing how we belong and knowing how we can communicate. Um, it's 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 an amazing um, it's an amazing relationship that 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 I believe for me um, have cultivated cultivated a lot of a lot of sense of feeling like there's a space and place I belong and that I actually have something you know that my voice is important it's relevant there's something that I needed to say so for example one of the um, one of the project that I've, um, we've created and we produced, it was we, during a time, actually early on this year, when this atrocity of Asian violence was happening um, in, in a global sense, um, 
And I mean, especially here in Chinatown in Oklahoma, we felt it was, I mean, it, it was just ridiculous, like how the violent attack, especially where with our elderly was happening continuously um, for months. Um, and very little was being mentioned out in the media. Um, and then tensions started rising up of like the black community and the Asian communities. And, you know, here in Oakland, we have such a deep history of, of the Black Panther and the Yarrow Peril and the solidarity within these different communities. So invited folks um, of those descent that are highly invested and rooted here to come and paint together. And we created like a mobile mural paint-a-thon for a weekend where we draw images of, of what solidarity looked like and you know what what and how to put an end on this like outrageous atrocity that was happening within our elders. And I just remembered, I mean, and 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 there was a whole panel that we left where we didn't, we weren't sure if the elders were gonna come in this um, senior housing. There's like an art senior collective of, of, um, in a public housing that, that was happening. We had invited them and we had talked to them, but because of the fear that was happening during the time, we weren't even sure if they came, they were coming out and, and they were there throughout the whole weekend. And they painted a whole panel where they hadn't left their house for over like nine months because of the fear of just even stepping to have to being harmed and to have them be part of that, be part of that event and be part of, of just the creation of the work that happened um, during that weekend where those panels then, we, we kind of created a cube panels for folks to paint on so it could be mobile and we can put them in different spaces. And then we turned them into lanterns at night. And even at nighttime, they were calling us and it's like, we want to see them and we want to be with you and we like celebrate it in rituals. And, and it just shows just like how powerful um, coming together can be, but also coming together in creation versus just, you know, we've, we've had vigils, we have, we have cried and we have, you know, um, we made our offerings and, and but, but to also have a space to actually beyond the grief is like to envision what's next and to envision together what it is that we want to create together. It, it was just such an amazing, powerful moment um, for us, not just to you know, create some, some, some amazing pieces of work, but also to actually have conversations on like, what change do we want to see and how are we going to make that happen? So, so yeah, I, I, I think it's definitely, um, I think how I was raised in the community in which I was at, like mural and collaborative work is, I mean, mural just because it's decisive of it, sometimes an elderly becomes, you know, collaborative on, on five foot women. <laughs> so it's just like to have that extra hand to get, reach those higher places and to just have somebody there as you paint, it becomes almost kind of this inevitable practice of, of collaboration. But, um, but again, it's, it's not like something written in any book that that's a mandatory thing for all artists to have. But for me, I think that is actually one of the more joyful part of this work is when you actually meet folks you can work with and collaborate with and share a same goal or, or vision of what it is that you're trying to create. I mean, it's just such a beautiful thing to, to to be able to do that. And I think throughout my experience for, for the decades in which I've been doing this, um, when you hit that, when, when, you, when you find that, um, it's, it inevitably becomes this, this, this connection and this community and this relationship that's, that gets cultivated because it's not just like, you know, we're putting up our names so that people can know who we are, but rather we're actually creating a world in which we wanna, we wanna engage in, so. That, right. That's my feel to it. I mean, I know there's probably a lot of different perspectives. <laughs> I am so happy you hit on collaboration, Cece. And also thank you for sharing that. Um, I think it, it's one of the things I was thinking about was just already um, how so much of the mural work that 
well, so many artists, both of you particularly do, that is collaborative. Cece, I know you have um, the collective you're a part of. And then Kyra, I know you just finished a huge uh, mural in downtown Portland um, that focuses on LGBTQ um, representation. So I, I, I definitely am curious. I, Cece, I feel like you've definitely hit upon it, but Kyra, for you, like how important is collaboration to your process um, and, and, and also as a, as a mural maker? It's very important. Um, I think collaboration is important to life, you know, just us as human beings. Uh, there's an African proverb that I love is if you want to go fast, go along. But if you want to go far, go together. And that's always been my common uh, go to uh, philosophy when tackling big works. Um, I'm very family oriented, I'm very friend oriented, and I'm all about togetherness. And I feel like having um, having someone to lean on, having someone to work with, to bounce ideas off of uh, is an efficient way to get things done um, as a community. And I don't think that's something that is um, solely for mural work, but just in all, um, all aspects of life. So uh, collaborating has been a major part. I don't think, I've only had one uh, project I think I've done publicly that I did not collaborate on. Um, so it's been it's been a huge part. I, I, it's, it's been such a so natural. I haven't had to articulate uh, what it's like to co collaborate because I don't really know much else unless I'm doing some personal work. But it's, collaboration has always been a, been a, a huge part. It's just second nature to me. And I mean, I think as I mean, I, I share very similar like it's something that I really, truly enjoy doing. And, and when it's being done right, it's, it's such a magical, beautiful thing. But I want to be real. Like it's not easy. It ain't. You know, <laughs> it's so like there's definitely moments I'm like I've cried on wall because we can't agree on some. You know, and it's just like we're tossing brushes because we can't figure out what to do and what's next and have to move it along. You know, um, it's it's I mean just like any relationship. There's like even with the same folks. I mean I'm part of a collective. We've been together for over. 15 years now too and we still go at it you know it's not always like oh everything is wonderful everything's great we know exactly what we're doing I mean through the years we've learned to do it better but it doesn't make it easier yeah um and that's just real I, I just want to go and touch on that because you know when folks have done any kind of group projects there's different factors that comes to play and I think that's um important to recognize but I think it's also what makes experience what it is, you know, um, and what allow us to grow. Mm -hmm. And each 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 time is different, um, which always comes with inevitably surprises. <laughs> um, yeah. But given all of that, given given I mean, given the challenges and sometimes the difficulties. I mean, like there's you know relationships been dampened and some have been lost because you know we're so passionately involved in, in the work that we're doing um I just can't really imagine it anything different um because I think at, at least for me the world that I'm trying to envision is not with me alone and like a lot of my work focuses a lot on work of solidarity both kind of like the actual practice and process, but also like historically and what we're trying to go is, is, is um, a big portion of my praxis. Um, so it's, 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 it's a learning lesson each time. And as much as I've done it, um, it's always been kind of, it's, 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 it's sometimes con conflicting because as an artist, you know, and I say this when I was a teacher, and I say this also as a public artist who does a lot of collaboration and community engagement. You know, sometimes as an artist, there is moments where I want to be selfish and like be in my own head and try to kind of like reimagine and rethink and kind of figure out and sort it out what it is that I want to do and what, what I want to create. I mean, I think there's portion of, of, of art, especially in this society, where that is such um you know, having that moment in that time and that almost kind of like, 
selfishness to be able to create becomes part of like the practice, but as an educator and as an organizer and as just a, a, a community um, in the forefront of our communities, um, when you're doing collaboration and collective work, you almost have to be really selfless um, because in some ways you're representing things that are not only not only my story, you know, but this our collective experience. So it does get it does get challenging sometimes. Um, and 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 there's a lot of, of work and practice, I think, that comes with with doing this work in terms of just like how we actually relate to one another. And, and that is reflected on the work that, that we create. Um, I mean, I feel like often or not, at least in the work that I've done, like I know and I could tell just based on what project we complete, like I could, I could always reflect back on how the actual process of, of collaboration um, through that experience was for me or was for us. Um, Within, within the different groups and different people and different artists I've worked with. So, and I've, I've done collaboration with artists and I've done collaboration with po folks who've never like painted a brush before, you know, it's different levels and um, different levels of expectations and different levels of assumptions and different levels of just, you know, but I think what it is is having a shared goal of what it is that we want to create together and um and even coming to that is 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 work um and and, and sometimes it's actually the best part of the work yes kyra do you have anything no, else to add to that on the the collaboration is not being easy because one the truth is it's not and that just jogged a memory for me and I know we're going to take questions but I just want to say this I always ask myself sometimes like why do I continue to collaborate when I know it isn't easy but the beauty of the outcome you know having a baby isn't easy you know no one enjoys the labor <laughs> but we enjoy the child you know the and, I, and I'm, I'm reminded of the saying the harder the battle the sweeter the victory um me as a black woman and 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 public art being my trade, had it not been for me collaborating or rubbing elbows or networking from the, to the people across from me, I would not be where I am. And it's not my interest to get my foot in the door to be the only one in a room, but for me to hold the door open for other people to get into the room. So collaborations, that, that's, that what that's what happens when we collaborate. We 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 share in the wealth, we share in the experience, we share in the knowledge. Um, and that's, that's the beauty of community, because um, no one does it alone. There's no such thing intrinsically as being self-made. Uh, there's always, and sometimes it's the labor of people you don't know, you've never met. It's their sacrifices that also helps you uh, get to where you are. So that's the beauty of collaboration for me. That's the symbol, and it's, it's not easy. But what we create and the opportunities that it's so beautiful that all the struggles, all the perils become worth it. And I think that's why it's something I can never throw to the wayside because it's the reason why I'm here. So, yeah, absolutely. I so appreciate both of you just being real with that. I, yeah, yes, yes to all of that. Um, I also, I can't believe, so we're five minutes till, um, and it just feels like it went like that. So I'm going to uh, turn it over to Anna to help facilitate. If there are any questions um, that folks want to ask right now? Um, and if not, I have one last question that I will ask of you both. And maybe that's the way we will end the evening, but we'll see. Yeah, please, if you have a question, um, feel free to turn your mic on or your camera or both and, and let us know. And if we don't have someone immediately, maybe um, you could ask your question, Sal, while people think, but let's see. Yeah, I mean, I, I will just put it out there in case uh, we don't get anything, but like, I'm curious from both of you, what projects, what things are you looking forward to coming up on the horizon? Um, yeah. 
Absolutely. Oh, I'm not mute. Well, um, I'm excited for, I have a few uh, more public arts uh, projects, a few things under contracts um, that I'm excited to do. Uh, you know, here in Portland, we have a season, you know, when it comes to rain. So it's, it's a lot of work piled on in itself, but I'm excited to get those works completed. And then I'm just excited to just go back to doing like when I'm not in mural season, I do personal commissions and I'm ready to just get in my portrait bag and draw faces and paint faces all day. So that's really, I'm ready to get back to um, just my personal commissions and being in my own private studio, making, making portraits. Yeah, no, it's been very busy for me this last, I mean, God, this last, I mean, it seems like it's been for a long time actually, <laughs> been very busy. I just finished a couple of publications doing some illustration uh, I was mentioning earlier with Sal, um, I've been in the studio the past three months mostly um, doing kind of painting illustration for various publications, um, including kind of the National Domestic Workers Alliance to a local chef over here doing kind of an autobiographical cookbook um, and a couple of different campaigns that's been happening um, to birthright, to women's right that, that just happened the past few months. So I've been, um, pretty much wrapping that up, um, finishing that up and coming into fall, which becomes, I mean, I live in the Bay Area where the climate is fairly consistent. So our mural season is pretty much all year long. Um, gonna be working a lot and doing big public um, walls for public housing. Um, there's one here in, Oakland, a couple in San Francisco, where working alongside various um, different neighborhoods and um, community developers, just really imagining what development looked like, um, what that can be, and and especially at this time where just like um, migration and transitions of folks and people, especially after this pandemic has been kind of like buck wild really, um, but how do we, um, how we consciously create and provide affordable spaces and not displace community. So I've been working a lot with different um, kind of develop, developers, but nonprofit developers who are very much aware of the need for Affordable, affordable housing so that communities um, who are not, I mean, the Bay Area is probably one of the highest or is the highest um, property cost and, and cost of living over here have skyrocketed so much. So, so many people have been displaced and have moved out and there's definitely this um, actions and momentum of folks figuring out how do we you know, make our place amazing and beautiful and keep our people in it. I appreciate you sharing that. I, yeah, I, I know I was one of those folks who come and went uh, years and years ago. Um, I see people are slowly uh, leaving remarks in the chat, uh, a lot of gratitude. Um, I just want to, I think, I think this is it. Yeah, Anna? Yeah, I just want to thank you both so much for being a part of this conversation. Um, it's, CC, you had mentioned this when we first uh, talked about this, uh, it's going to go by like that. And sure enough, it's exactly did. So um, thank you both for sharing your perspectives. Thank you both for um, spending, the, just sharing your knowledge as well as your experience. And for those that joined us today, we really appreciate this. Again, this is one conversation of three. Uh, this is a, it's in many ways an experiment. We've never done something like this before. Um, this has been amazing and awesome. And also, whew, I'm really happy it's finished. <laughs> so- um, Salvador, thank you so much for moderating. Yes, thank you both, Anna and Salvador for putting it together sure. in Paris. Oh, it, I mean, it's such a pleasure. This is my second time actually yeah. having conversation with you and it's, yes. it's, it's amazing and I'm excited to to get down and, and collaborate and yes. go multi-city wide but also for the rest of y'all 
please feel free to get in contact with both of us. Um, our social media was shared. I'm not always super responsive, but I do respond. You might take days, but I do respond. So um, if y'all too shy to ask questions and want to know more or just feel the pulse of, of what's happening, um, feel free to hit us up. Or yeah. if you're in Portland and want to collaborate, hit me up. Hit me up. <laughs> yes. I appreciate everyone for coming out. Really do. Thank you both so much. And yes, thank you to everyone who joined us, really. This was wonderful. Take care, everyone. Bye.